The cycloid is a special kind of parametric that has this form. Here's x, and here's y, okay? So still, we're still talking about parametric representation, all right? But here's what a cycloid is. Imagine if you see somebody riding their bike in front of you, okay? Um, you know, across the horizon. And at some point, they, they ride over a, a wad of chewing gum, okay? That chewing gum is stuck to their tire. And as they roll around, you're watching them roll in front of you, roll by. Can you imagine the path that the chewing gum would take? Take your hand and, and try to, to demonstrate the path of the chewing gum, okay? Most people that do this are, are, are forming a circle, like a circle, a circle, a circle, a circle. I think that's the logical thing, but that's not exactly how a cycloid works, okay? Um, I've got a video that's, that's a decent um, visualization of this. So watch, watch the point on this tire, okay? It's not quite making a circle. So this video is in Russian. Um, the sound, I've got the sound off because it's in Russian anyway. Um, but it's a, pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good video, I think. Let me fast forward a little bit. Well, we're talking about the motorcycle. So here's going to be a motorcycle, kind of the same thing, right over like a, I don't know what that is, is that a rock? A model. Um, I don't know why he has a chalkboard as a license plate. <laughs> so he rides over that rock and look at the path that that rock takes. Okay? It's not really going in a circle, it looks more like a bounce, kind of, or like a, like a rabbit hop or something. So that's that's what we need to get out of a cycle, okay? Cycle is going to take kind of this, this path. It looks like a, a bounce or a hump. So example five, we're going to graph this cycle. Okay, so no problem with Desmos. We're going to graph this cycloid. So look at this as an ordered pair. There's your x and there's your y in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So let's graph that. Okay, so we can see there's one, one path of that cycloid, okay, which would coincide with one revolution of the bike tire or the motorcycle tire, okay. If you notice, it's hard to tell, but, um, you know, this, this comes down at about 6.28 or so, 6.28, that's 2 pi, all right, that's 2 pi. And so we can see, you know, when you look at the path of this, it starts at 0, <laughs> And it comes down, that's 2 pi. And of course, that's 2 pi. 2 pi, like 360 degrees, that's one rotation of the tire, the bike tire. Um, so it goes up to a uh, maximum height there of 2, it looks like. I want you to change this 2 pi. Change the interval to 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi. See what happens. I'm going to change it to 10 pi. Okay. 10 pi, okay? Basically, 10 pi would represent five rotations of that tire, right? Five rotations of the tire. So the, the chewing gum goes up and down to the ground and then all the way up to the top of the tire and then down to the ground. Five rotations, okay? So do we have to draw, we have to graph it from zero to two pi. So, That's what we have to graph, right? <clears throat> Let's draw it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It might be good if you go by uh, you know intervals that would take you to two pi. <laughs> 
but you don't necessarily have to go buy pi over q or pi over four or anything like that. We're going to go. Um, we're going to go out to six point two eight, which is going to be about right there. Okay, that's that's two pi. Six point two eight. We're going to start at zero. We're going to need to go up to two to a maximum height, and that's going to turn out to be about pi, three point one four pi. So our maximum is going to be about right there. So. Draw your curve. Quick, quick sketch. That is the cycloid from zero to two pi.